Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Theater Professor Vidcast. My name is Terry Dana Jakimiak II, and I am the Theater Professor. And this will be the last time I do that type of intro for these videos. Because now that I'm up over 50 videos, if you don't know who I am, well, you can always jump back to some of the earlier episodes. And Happy New Year! A day late, because this is January 2nd and not January 1st. This week I step away from how I've been doing videos with open broadcast software and combine it with actual live video of my Wacom Intuos. The reason for this? Well, this week we're going to learn a couple of the settings on the Wacom. So if you use a tablet or maybe you just received a tablet for Christmas, this will be an optimal video for you to watch. I'm going to be showing you exactly what the buttons do and how to use a scroll wheel as you do your art on your computer. And maybe something you didn't know, you could actually use your fingers to move around on the screen, including web browsing. So go ahead and get your Wacom set up, get your computer turned on, and let's have a look at the Wacom Intuos Pro. All right, now that I've sat down, you can kind of see that my setup is a little different than what I usually do. Usually all you're seeing is my computer screen, but this time around I am adjusting a little bit. So not only are you seeing my computer screen, but you are indeed seeing my tablet as well on my very messy desk. If you're a bronze member, jump over to the website, you'll see a little background video of all, all this being set up. This is for, for bronze member only. But, um, but yeah, so this is... This is my setup. It is not the cleanest, not the neatest, not the nicest, but it will work. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be looking over how to set up your Wacom, uh, Wacom uh, tablet. Now understand, I am. this is very specific to my setup. This is a Wacom or Wacom. I've heard it said two different ways. I'm going to say Wacom. If you don't like that version, I apologize. And maybe you can adjust my voice in your headphones. The way I'm using the Wacom Wacom Intuos Pro. Okay, now if you're using a Bamboo, if you're using a Cintiq, those are going to be a little different. As you can see, this is my Pro right here. It's a nice little setup, and I'm adjusting some. There we go. It's a nice little setup, and I am a right-hander. If you're left-hander, and we're going to get into that, you'll actually have it set up slightly different. Understand that those that use this, this can be wireless. I keep my te mine tethered here and then wireless when I take it to school. The wireless port is on the side. You pull out a small USB stick. You plug it into wherever you're using it, and that's how the wireless works. My wireless stick currently is at the college that I teach at, so I'm not going to pull it out and show you. On the left-hand side here, you have three buttons above. You actually have a spin wheel here and a button, and then three buttons below. Your drawing screen is all here, and then of course you have your stylus, which looks very similar to the Adonit Jot Touch with Pixel Point, which is what I use for my iPad. Now, with both the screen and my hand moving around, you can see that I'm not touching, and not touching the tablet with the pen tip, but it does move my mouse around. So let's look at a couple of things now. I, again, I'm on a PC, the non-PC version, i.e. Mac version, because I couldn't think of Mac right away. The Mac version might look a little different than this, so follow along as best you can. I don't have a Mac right now, and unfortunately, what that means is you get to see the PC version. This right now, what I have open here is called the Wacom Desktop Center. You've got your updates, which there are currently no updates available orientation if you click on this and this is where you can adjust your tablet you can either orientate the tablet so the express keys are on the left for those of you that are right-handed or orientate the tablet so that the express keys are on the right for those of you that are left-handed and then underneath this and this applies to all tablets set for left-handed use set for right-handed use I am indeed right-handed therefore it is set up for right-handed use Moving along here, we have our touch settings. I currently, for some, oh, I know why. I currently, you're showing, it's showing touch off. It's now on. 
the reason it was off is because on the tablet itself, if you hit the top button, that turns your touch on and off. And I had turned it off earlier for something else. So touch is now on. You can open the touch input and gesture settings. So if we click on that, it brings up this. Now we're gonna see this again because you've got your touch options, your standard gestures, your my gestures under touch, but you also have grip pen and function. So I'm not gonna fit, go through this yet. We'll bring that up in a second. On the left here, we have pen and button settings. Open the pen settings, express key settings, and open touch ring settings. If we click any of those, this comes again back up. You can also back up and restore settings to your Wacom Cloud. You can actually back up and restore settings to the computer. And then help and support is in the bottom there. We're not going to go through all of that, OK? You can see there's more down there. All right. So let's go ahead, come back up to touch settings. We're going to open up the touch and input gesture settings. You'll see device. You'll see tool. You'll see application. Can I make this bigger? I can't make this bigger. Otherwise, I would. Our device for me is the Intuo Pro S. We're going to start with touch. And this is interesting because you can adjust your touches based on application. Okay. Right now, mine is set for all. So for all applications, I'm going to be using the same touch sequences. Okay. Currently, enable touch input, yes. Your pointer speed. So if I were to take my stylus and set it down, I can still use my finger to move things around. Scrolling speed point acceleration, and double tap time. And you can test here. There we go. OK. So that's touch. I'm not going to change, or under touch options, I'm not going to change anything. We go to our standard g gestures. For one finger, you have currently set up tap to click. I do not have drag but I do have edge swipes, meaning swiping from the edge does do things. All right, down in two fingers, we have tap to right click. So this is a, so if I come out here, for example, and I come here, I have to be on here, and I come here, I can right click. See, that's two finger tap. You have swipe left or right to navigate, which is what I was doing earlier. So if we come back to our web page, so I've gone forward, two fingers, swipe, and we go back. Let's look at this, NFL or band. Oh, that opens up a new window, so that's not gonna work for us. There we go, the interview. The big thing in the news, the interview. So we're on this page, two finger swipe, and we go back. <laughs> I'm not going far enough. You have to go into this little box here, which I'm very bad at sometimes. All right, the other two finger we have is scroll. So you can see, you can easily scroll up and down with two fingers. You can also zoom with pinching and rotate. These are very much like the iPad or any tablet, I would presume. But if you have the iPad, that is zoom and rotate, two fingers, etc. Three finger setup, it's currently set up as drag. I don't really use it. And then four fingers swipes left or right to switch the application. And I've never tried, oh, look at that. It does indeed. So that's four finger. This is good to know. It's not something I use. All right. So now you've seen all the standard gestures. You can also come in and set up my gestures. So a three finger tap currently is set for radial dial menu. You can also set it up for keystroke to open run or show desktop. Let's do show desktop. And I can't seem to get it to work. So, oh, there it is. Maybe it was just saving. 
So it goes to show desktop. Let's try that one more time. There it is. All right. We'll go back to radial dial menu. And there's our radial dial menu. Seems like you have to put a little bit of force for it to work. Four fingers, swipe up is a show desktop currently. Swipe down is to switch to win, switch win eight apps. And then five fingers, tap is a keystroke. Swipe down is settings. I haven't really used any of those in regards to my gestures. So, you know, it is what it is. In here, you'll notice I have Photoshop and Painter. So there are some built in things that you can put in there, such as save, or undos, redos, that kind of thing. All right, so all of that is under touch. Now that we're done with touch, let's jump over to functions. Our functions are our buttons and scroll wheel on the left hand side. We'll start with the express keys. On the Intos Pro, you have six express keys. Right now, oops. Right now, my top express key is touch on off. And this is for all other, because you'll see here Art Rage, Photoshop, Lightroom and Painter all have different settings. So touch on off. Our second button here is settings. So if I were to click it, there are my settings. My third one is modifier. So I currently this is a shift. So if I hold this down and then press another key on my keyboard, it would act like a shift button. Notice now on the screen on the left hand side, we have this faded, uh, essentially showing our different buttons and what they do. Well, that happens if you hover over one of the keys without pressing down. Okay, modifier control is our topmost bottom button, modifier alt, middle, and pan scroll is our bottom button. All of these can be changed as you see here. You can change it to clicks keystrokes, modifiers, radial menu, back forward, and a whole variety of other things. How you set this up is entirely up to you. And I encourage you to try out a whole variety of different ways before figuring out exactly what works best. Also, when you're in different programs, you can always adjust the program to work specifically for you. Next up, we have our touch ring. If you notice right now on my keyboard, the top left light is lit up. That's my auto scroll zoom, which allows me to zoom in and out. The second one is currently keystroke. The third one is rotate. Fourth one is keystroke. As we rotate through these, you'll see, for example, if I were to open Photoshop, we'll open Photoshop real quick. Dooby dooby doo ba. As we wait for Photoshop, let me take. Oh, there it is. Do I want to improve Adobe Ob uh, products? Not right now. I'm just going to open something and grab my paintbrush. Now, what you'll see, these are what the four. Oops. The four are for this. The top left is auto scroll zoom, cycle layers brush size, so watch my brush size get bigger and smaller, and then rotate. Alright, so each of those can be programmed based on what your program is used for, or how it's used. Alright, moving along we have our radial menu. You can see each of the items that come up with the radial menu. You can indeed change the settings if you want. Cancel. So you click on each of them as you see here. And you can change exactly what it does. 
And to, again, to get to the radial menu, you have one of two ways of doing it. Or, yeah. By hitting three fingers down, it brings up the radial menu. Boom, 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 boom. All right, finally you have wireless, which is your wireless setup, and my wireless is fine, 100% battery, yada, yada, yada. And then last but not least, you have your grip pen settings. And you have pen, eraser, and mapping. You can adjust the pen settings to the best of your abilities. I'm not gonna go through that right now. If you end up taking any of my Art Rage classes, I will go through each of the students in those classes, with each of the students in those classes, and how to set it up so it's optimal for them. But this is up to your own, uh, your own, however you wanna do it. You have your tip feel, you can adjust the pressure, you can tip double click distance, tilt sensitivity, all this other stuff. Same thing can happen with the eraser. And then you can map um, your express keys, your mode, your screen area, and tablet area. You can also map the two buttons on your pen. Finally, down here, you do have some options such as side switch mode, handedness, brightness adjustment, and pressure compatibility. Go through those and adjust them as you need. What you'll find is once you are fully set up, it becomes very easy to move about your space. Now understand right now I'm sitting at a very awkward angle in my chair, but you can see right now I'm adjusting my pen size very quickly and if I want to undo oh, wrong button control alt Z I'm undoing I've set my button here as my undo button. So here we go, adding it in, and then I'll just undo it all. You know, it's for those times that, whoa, too big. Those times that you're not happy with your line, you're like, oh, that line doesn't look good. That, oh, that line looks good. Oh, look at the beginning of that line, don't like it. So I can quickly undo. Zoom in. And undo all of that. So you can see how setting your buttons, setting your mouse, not your mouse, your pen, and adjusting it to how you like it can make all of this go much, much quicker. Essentially what you're doing is you're speeding up your workflow, which is important if you want to use the tablet to the best of its abilities. All right, well, that's it for this week. I know it's not an Art Rage video. I know it's not a Procreate video. I know it's not, you know, any of these videos, but I did have a couple of people come to me and ask me about, you know, setting up their Wacom. And now you have a basic idea of how to do it. All right. If you have any tips or tricks about how you've set up your Wacom, feel free to post it in the comments below. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. And I'm really excited to see how other people are using their tablets. Another cool thing here, I have my touch on and I can rotate, I can zoom in, and I can zoom out just with my two little fingers, just like an iPad. Yep, these are the reasons I love my tablet. On that note, I have to thank my mother and my brothers who actually purchased this tablet for me last year for a Christmas present. 
So a shout out goes to them. And finally, as it is just past the first of the month, I want to give a shout out to our Patreon supporters that are the $20 or above level. Currently, Art Rage is a supporter. Thank you, Art Rage, for supporting me as I continue to do tutorials not just of art rage but of all art apps so the fact that they're willing to uh be one of my supporters i, I greatly appreciate that and i do love art rage so um it works wonderfully and if you have questions about art rage definitely email me all right that's it for this week as everybody knows my name is terry dana jikimiak the second and i am the theater professor <laughs>